Hey guys, what do you call James Gunn when he puts out disgusting tweets? James, James Dunn! James <laughs> Dunn! That's not bad! I, I should have come up with that one. Good job, dude. Oh, man. James Dunn. <laughs> yeah. Start. I don't know if it's appropriate to make a joke about what's going on with this. Um, well, I don't know either, but I think it's at least reasonable to assume you maybe could. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you heard the news, but it looks like James Gunn has been fired at Disney. Mm. And Disney is with Marvel, as you all know. So, even though this, the video is not about this, I'm kind of curious if they're going to take the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 script. Because he put out a tweet or an Instagram picture, I forget, that he had a script. I don't know if they're going to take that script or they're going to just do something where like, we don't want to associate with him at all anymore, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Um, here's what I do know. I found the tweets. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> had zero clue that he had made these kind of tweets. Now, everything is about context. Everything is about perspective on certain situations and examining it. And I am in no way here going to defend the tweets that he put out because they are pretty. I don't. I'm not going to read from them. They're very. They're, they're jokes in in rather poor taste. They're jokes in poor taste. A lot of them deal with Touch joking on. about minors, pedophilia jokes. They're pretty vulgar. They're jokes. very vulgar jokes, very and, and and especially the fact that they're a tweet. You can hear a stand-up comic make a certain joke, but there's a lot of different context behind it. You're watching a comedian, you know, and even sometimes nowadays a stand-up comic can even make a joke and get a lot of backlash for a joke they make on stage. Mm -hmm. A tweet with no tone, no real additional context leading up to this sentence or sentences that you put out. It's just the listener hearing it a certain way. It's like, when I read it, I was like, oh, these are, these are nasty. These are disgusting jokes. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt when I read it. Even though they're obviously just jokes, I get the decision that has been made. <laughs> I get the decision. I am actually not at all surprised that he tweeted these things, and I'm more just like... I, I know where James Gunn came from, so none of this is surprising to me, and I'm sort of surprised that he made it into the Disney building at all without them just kind of acknowledging, yeah. like, he's from Troma. He wrote Tromeo and Juliet, and, like, Troma is the home of all yeah. things, you know, off-color and taboo and wild and yeah. wacky. That's why I was bringing up comedians specifically, because yeah. James Gunn, prior to, Gu even with what he's done with Guardians, I've always associated him as, like, a really edgy type of comic writer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he does have a certain teenage boy sensibility to some of his jokes and and you know more of the earlier stuff where it's very explicit but you know that carries through his work even up to today there's obviously going to be two sides that are going to be presented to what's happening right now one side is these are old tweets let it go that's one side that will be presented the other side is no that's not right you know, let another white man get off who would just say whatever he wants. And like, I'm more on the side of you got to accept the consequences of what happened for your actions. So it makes sense to me what's happened. Because not everything is meant to just be joked about. Well, and this uh, is a lesson, too, about living in the giant archive that we all inhabit now. Is like, these are tweets from, some of them are from 2009, even. And stuff just stays there, and people don't always know. He put up a tweet before deleting his account, basically saying, like, I have grown a lot and changed a lot as a person over the years. And that's a fair thing to say, but, you know, like, a tweet is just immortalized in a little box and can be taken out of context and out of its time frame at any moment. And that's what happened here, you know? So I can't blame Disney at all for, for cutting ties. I'm just still a little surprised that they had no idea this could happen with him because it's James Gunn. I don't know if they were completely oblivious that it would ha it could happen with him. You see, the thing is, I'm all for maybe he is a different guy and he's grown a lot. For you guys who can sometimes be confused <laughs> by when you watch her older videos, and I used to go by name Ryan Wright. <laughs> Ryan Wright, uh, the idea of that alter ego was to make as many, to include as many offensive, perverted jokes. It wasn't every video, but as many as I could throughout the week. Mm -hmm. You know, borderline sexist jokes, borderline racist jokes. And that's why I went by a, an alter ego name because once I switched to 
just being me. Some people might not notice a difference, but I think what you'll notice if you really pay attention is I'm not really that perverted in yeah. real life. There's a reason why a lot of girls would keep coming on the channel because off camera, I wasn't really a pervert. You yeah, know? you don't just go around poking everybody <laughs> Yeah, I'm just you not know? like trying to offend the hell out of everyone I know. <laughs> yeah, you know? for sure. When he said I, something to similar effect, he's like, you know, I used to fancy myself a provocateur. I used to love to dabble in the taboo because yeah. I thought I was going to get a rise out of everybody. Yeah. So I get what his past might be. And prior to the whole Me Too movement and all those things, I stopped doing the whole Ryan Wright shtick for several reasons. A major reason that I was in conflict for a long time was I was sick of being known as this guy wherever I went mm -hmm. in my personal life. Well, I would go places and I would be just be known as this guy. And I'm not going to go through every single video over the years where I made a joke that was so edgy as Ryan Wright and take it down or whatever. I don't remember a lot of him. But even not long ago, there was a video that I put up at the very beginning of The Real Rejects called Why Women Have It Better Than Men. <laughs> and it's a very just stupid, jokey video. Like, I, I'm coming up with reasons that are obviously just so not true. But the idea of Ryan Wright was to say it with as much conviction as possible. Like, they're dumb reasons. Yeah, it's, that's the satire. Like, of one Wright. of the reasons was, if I'm having a threesome with two girls, I can't use both crotches at the same time, but a girl can use the... Like, it's obviously <laughs> stupid stuff, but I said it with, like, conviction. It's the satire of it. And then I saw a comment come in. And I realized I responded differently to this comment in, in my own life than how I used to. Which was, ah, it's just a joke. It's funny. Like, I wouldn't even reply back to what people were saying. Like, you're just a joke. Don't be so sensitive. Because I've kind of grown into a person that's like, sensitivity is actually a strength. And sensitivity is necessary right now. I'd rather be overly sensitive than insensitive mm -hmm. if I'm going to sway to one side of the argument. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's the cultural argument right now because I think our sensitivities are very high right now. It seems yeah. like as a society, all of our nerves are on. But I am kind of of the mind that, yes, while that can sometimes lead to extreme kind of knee-jerk reactions, I would rather we go this direction and then balance out versus yeah. the opposite direction and not find our I'm way. I'm not saying there, you know? be oversensitive and then lead that to anger and hostility. Mm -hmm. I'm saying just be more sensitive to other people's feelings. and then a, a, Be more aware of other people. A, a woman commented on that video, this is like a month ago or something, and said like, wow, you're such a sexist. And immediately I was like, you know what? I'm going to apologize to her because I was like, you're, you're right. Even though this video is years old, I don't go by this Ryan Wright dude anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't joke like this at all anymore, at least on camera. No. <laughs> 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 I don't joke like this anymore. I was like, that's not me. And I feel bad because I've offended her and I, I apologize. And then I took down the video. So the thing though is, I'm like, when I, I'm not going to go here and attack James Gunn and go, what you said is just like it is disgusting what he said, but I'm not gonna ridicule him as a human being. Well, yeah, I don't because I'm don't, sure you go back to some of my old videos. Maybe I said some shit that's like fucked up when I was doing the Ryan Wright stick. Yeah, I definitely don't love. I definitely don't appreciate a lot of different aspects about James Gunn's sense of humor. But I'm not sitting here like I hate you. I hope you die. You know, like Ugh. Uh, because this is a grand example of you should really think before you tweet. Uh, especially now, I, the thing that concerns me most about this is I'm just like, why do you have such a fixation on pedophilia in your jokes? Like, that is like the red that's flag. That's the worrisome, yeah. That's what, yeah, that's the worrisome thing. The jokes themselves, I'm just like, oh, dude, like, calm down. And yeah, it's just like, you made your bed and now you gotta sleep in it, man. <laughs> yeah, so I completely understand. It's not the same thing as what Robert Downey Jr. did. Robert Downey Jr. had this really bad criminal past of being a drug addict and all these things. And Disney could easily go, you know, <laughs> look at your past. This don't fly well. <laughs> Well, that's the but it's, it's a thing. different thing because he was just harming himself. I don't really know the details of the story. I don't know if he harmed other people or whatever. I don't. But from what has been in the public perspective is he was just self-harming himself with his drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And even though that doesn't fly under Disney umbrella as a good thing. Uh, wholesome. Yeah, this is, you know, this is Disney. And you're talking about molesting kids and stuff like yeah. this is a whole this is a whole a whole more sensitive subject right now <laughs> yeah and i mean it's it's totally not gonna fly with any of their sensibilities or their mm. image like i get where disney's coming from with this and i also get i get his argument and i do get the sense that yeah he has grown up over time and the sad thing is you just forget about the stupid shit you said before and now also the stupid shit has a different role in society than it ever did. So, And I think it should. 
Yeah, That's yeah, it should. That's the difference, is, is it should. I'll hear comics sometimes talk about how we're in a culture that's a lot more hypersensitive and i'm like that's kind of a good thing though because it, we have movements that are very relevant and important it's good for the bigger like yeah there are yeah. certain fun little things that get maybe trampled along the way or maybe responded a bit too harshly to but for the grand better good of society yeah i think it is a good thing to be sensitive and to be awake and aware so that we can make the world better and then go back to joking about shit, you know? Yeah. There's been a lot of talk that I've been opening up my mind to of the art versus the artist mm -hmm. the debate. For the longest time, I would lean more towards like, well, yeah, just separate your fucking self, dude. Like, that's how I used to just lean. Just watch a Roman Polanski movie, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I used to be there, and I'll admit that. And I'm more at this point in my life now where I'm like, well, we can't just keep doing that. That's not okay. I think that maybe he has changed. It's like, I don't know who James Gunn is. I don't know yeah. if he's maybe, like... The he problem. made some fucked up jokes years ago that were public. I don't know if he still jokes like that when the cameras aren't on him. Or I don't know if he jokes like that once he signed with Disney. Like, I don't know. Bottom line is, I totally get why Disney did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like that's the, at least for me, that's kind of the only conclusion I can draw is I understand this whole situation, how it came to be, how the decisions were made, and I can't really argue with it, <laughs> you know? And uh, art from the artist is one of the few defining debates right now in the public sphere. And that's like the trickiest thing because there is a certain amount of... It's always going to be... I've heard this point before, so I'm going to ape it here. It's always going to be a little bit arbitrary where you draw the line because I don't think there's any place that everyone will agree on. But yeah, it's like when you find out that the artist who makes your beloved art maybe is not such a savory person or maybe has some yeah. destructive points of view or does destructive things, for me anyway, as a consumer of media, it, it, that awareness, once it enters my mind, is, is in the art. It's just there, you yeah. know? So, I mean, this to me isn't horrible enough that I might never watch another James Gunn movie the way, like, a Roman Polanski situation. I'm like, I don't think I want to do that. Like, yeah, yeah, bad tweets are bad, and I certainly... Do, like, James Gunn is just problematic to me. There are things I like about him. There are things I don't like about him. Yeah. It's a fascinating debate. I don't think we need to go find him and burn him or anything like no, that. No, no. But, yeah, I mean, I can certainly understand if you don't want to support James Gunn anymore... I don't That's think he, I don't think his career is exactly ruined. No, he's just not a fit for Disney. I was astonished when they got yeah. him in the first place. I was yeah. like, which is like, you know, cool for him, but also really. And he, he entered the spectrum of, of the geekdom community before Guardians as like really edgy shit. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, and really taboo, really wild so stuff. I'm like, don't make these jokes anymore. <laughs> and you're not a fit for Disney anymore. Mm -hmm. Just uh, move on, because yeah. Yeah, Another news, Joss Whedon is taking over Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah there you go. The more acceptable version of screwing up the public. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the art from the artist line is just everyone's to, to draw at a certain point. Because I bet there are some people out there who can just understand that this piece of art is beyond a person, you know? Because a person, like, bad people make good art all the time, and... Good people make bad art all the time. You know, it's another point I'm aping from elsewhere, but that's also true. So it's like that's it's just such a hard argument. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think it's just up to everybody to figure it out for themselves and move forward. And and really, the crucial element is just deciding who to support monetarily, who to sustain by consuming their art. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, subscribe. <laughs> For more videos, <laughs> click that notification bell. Don't, don't tweet anything pedophilic. <laughs>